is the second part of the video on solving absolute value inequalities. The first video covered absolute value of something greater than a number. This video will show you what to do with absolute value less than a number. It turns out to be a different setup. I will start this the same way I did the other video, and that is to look at this from a definition standpoint. If you're looking at absolute value less than a number, what you're trying to find is all of the points that are less than that number away from zero. Like in this case, I'm looking for all the points that are less than three units away from zero. So take a look at a number line and name those points that are less than three steps away from zero. Well, all of these numbers are less than three steps away from zero. Same thing going in this direction. All of these are less than three points away from zero. We have to decide what to do with three and negative three. And since this is plain old less than, this is where we go with our curve parenthesis, and this right here represents all of the numbers whose distance away from zero is less than three. Check it out. Two is less than three steps away. Negative two is less than three steps away. But three and negative three are exactly three steps away, and that's why we have the curve parentheses. Back in the old days, we were using the open circle on this, which, as I said in the other video, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that the parentheses leads better to the interval notation. So there's two ways to write this inequality. One is to actually write it out as x greater than negative 3. And at the same time, we're looking at x less than 3. Now that way sets us up to follow the same two cases that we did for greater than. But it turns out there's an easier way to do an absolute value less than. Instead of thinking of this two separate inequalities, I want to think about it this way. Take a look at what's been shaded. What we've shaded is between negative 3 and 3. So where is x located? Between negative 3 and 3. Now this inequality, this is known as a compound inequality, is actually a shorthand way of writing this. Because if you just look at this part, pretend this isn't here, what does that say? x less than 3. That's this right here. Let's erase that and then scribble out this and see what this says. Now this says negative 3 less than x, but if I read it this way, this says x greater than negative 3, which is what that says. So it really turns out to be easier for us to think about absolute value less in this format. Notice how this is set up. The x is in the middle. We take 3 and put it on the right side. We take the negative of that and put it on the left side. And this is less than. The two inequality signs stay less than. You can only use this shorthand setup if the original problem says less than. You cannot do this for greater than. The interval notation for this is just simply the parentheses around each of those from negative 3 to 3, because that's what I colored in from negative 3 to 3. So any absolute value inequality in the form x plus or minus b less than c can be set up this way. Whatever was in the bar is going to go in the middle, and what's on either side is negative c on the left side, positive c on the right side, both with less than signs. And the implied word here is and, because this is like saying negative c is less than x plus b, and at the same time, x plus b is less than c. So let's take a look at an example. As soon as you see it set up this way with the absolute value bars on the left, less than a number, we're going to put negative 6 on this side with a less than, positive 6 on this side, and what goes in the middle is the value that's inside the bars, which is what we have right here. What you have here is a little inequality to solve. This says x plus 4, we want to get x alone, so I need to subtract 4, but it's not subtract 4 from both sides anymore. It is subtract 4 from all three parts. So do the arithmetic, those 4's cancel out, we have negative 10 is less than x, which is less than 2. And the graphing of this is pretty easy if you keep in mind what this means. This is saying x is between negative 10 and 2. So on my graph, I'm going to shade between negative 10 and 2. All I have to decide on this is what kind of symbol, parenthesis or bracket. Because it's plain old less, it's going to be the parenthesis. From negative 10 all the way up to positive 2, color in between, and that is your graphed inequality. And your interval notation is very simple. It's just a matter of the negative 10 to the 2 with those parentheses. Next problem, absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 4. Go to the setup, and we've got 
4 on this side, negative 4 on that side with the 2x minus 3. Notice we are still not changing what's inside the bars. It is less than or equal to, but it's still the same idea. It's going to take one more step for me to solve this one. So add 3 to everything, but I'm still not finished here because I've got 2x in the middle. To undo that, I need to divide everything by 2, and I end up with this inequality. Just an emphasis, this is a different setup than the one we did for greater than or greater than or equal to. That's where you actually had to write the two separate cases. With the less than right there, we can use this shorthand setup. Going to the graph now, this is less than or equal to, which means I'm going to be using the square bracket. Negative 1 half is halfway between 0 and negative 1, so I draw my square bracket right there. And I'm going up to 3 and a half, which is halfway between 3 and 4. Put your square bracket there, color in between, and that is your solution. When you go to write your interval notation, you're going to have the square brackets around there, negative 1 half, comma 3 and a half, which indicates we're going to shade between negative 1 half, 3 and 1 half, including the negative 1 half and 3 and 1 half because of the square bracket. If you saw the first video, you realize that you cannot set up your cases or set up your problem until the absolute value bars are alone. Well, they're not alone here. This is negative 3 times the absolute value. So to undo that, I need to divide both sides by negative 3. Remember also, when you divide by a negative, your inequality sign will change. So this became a less than. Then do your arithmetic. The negative 3s cancel, giving me the absolute value of x plus 7. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 is positive 3. Because that's less than now, I'm looking at that, not at the original, looking at that less than, that says I can use my little shorthand, put the negative 3 in the front, the 3 in the back, solve this by subtracting 7 from everybody, which gives me this inequality. Negative 10 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to negative 4, means I'm going to shade in between negative 10 and negative 4 using square brackets because that's less than or equal to. Incidentally, when you do these graphs, you want to be sure you are putting your bracket or your parenthesis right on that line, and then color in. I have seen people do this, pretending it's like from, from 5 to 8, putting the parenthesis like here and here. Well, that's like 4, 5 and a half, 8 and a half. So be sure that you put it right on the line that's on the number line. The interval notation for that will just be bracket negative 10 comma negative 4. There are some special cases we need to talk about. Since absolute value cannot be equal to a negative, that means absolute value cannot be less than a negative. So when you see that you have the less than a negative idea, that tells you this is not possible and we say no solution. Doesn't matter what this is as long as this is absolute value. If this is a less than sign or a less than or equal to sign, and it's a negative over here, you're going to have to say no solution. If it is a greater than sign here, this is a different story. Since absolute value is always positive, an absolute value equation with greater than a negative will give you the solution all real numbers. And the reason is, no matter what number you put in here, even if you put a negative in, in here, let's say you put in a negative 10, negative 10 plus 7 is negative 3, but the absolute value of negative 3 turns it into a positive value. So this left side will always be a positive value. And that positive is always greater than any negative. So with that, you're going to say all real numbers. So here's just a little conclusion on the special cases. If it's absolute value equal to a negative, you say no solution. Absolute value less than a negative, you say no solution. Absolute value greater than a negative, you say all real numbers. And one other thing to comment on, in case you didn't see the other video, this rule, all these rules I've given you are based on this absolute value being on the left side. If the original problem says something like negative 6 this way and x plus 4, before you make your conclusion based on this rule up here, you need to get this swapped around so that your absolute value is on the left side. That says absolute value of x plus 4, the negative 6 would flip over here. And I have to maintain the meaning. The big wide opening is facing the negative 6. So what this now says is the absolute value is less than a negative, which means that would be my no solution.